dilemma. Um, uh, because, I mean, go on. that's why, like, uh, connecting back to what I said earlier and what that you are saying, um, because that's the relationship that will come out once that, let's say, uh, we have that, like, common property and we start managing it. Then, like, all those social relations of ownership come mm. out. Mm -hmm. Like, start to be practiced. Mm. And then that's when we start having problems like this. Okay. Right? That, that's when, like, things don't go so smoothly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think in part, I would probably uh, still um, go with, well, your first point about rights. Um, in part because that's the language that I hear the activists say. Now, of course, that doesn't mean we have to conform to what an activist says, right? I mean, because we're in dialogue, you know, if, if we're sympathetic, we're in dialogue with that conversation. But but they use, I mean, social justice, right, is about, is predicated on a notion of, you know, justice which is predicated on right. the human subject, autonomy, calm, and whatever, right? So, so if you take that seriously, which I think you have to, rather than saying, well, you guys are all wrong, you're just dupes of the system, you don't understand, you know, it's a hegemonic concept. That doesn't seem to go very, you know, right, that's not yeah, a very sure. useful, useful thing. The ownership versus property, that's an interesting point. I mean, I think, um, I think what's useful, yeah, again, um, property, it depends what you mean by property. Um, <laughs> and uh, if you mean property, I, I, I would think of property as including ownership, um, because I would think of it not simply as a legal concept as legal certainly, but much more than legal, including ownership, which isn't the same as property in the sense of, of you know, title and so on, but, but nevertheless enfolded inside it. So, mm. so I would think of it as a bigger concept that would include okay. things like ownership, but it would also include law. Mm -hmm. Now, um, again, that's a dangerous game to, to, to play, um, but um, if you look at law, certainly at common law, and I don't know civil law, but look at common law and actually the, 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 um, the way in which uh, property, actually property law talks about ownership and property, it's actually a kind of more subtle set of understandings that are at work, right? So it can be about the right to not be excluded, as well as the right to exclude, right? You know, so, so um, um, racial uh, restrictions on uh, uh, in uh, cafes and, and uh, restaurants and so on, struck down by the civil, by civil rights law, which basically defines property or articulates a conception of property as simply as about not about the right to exclude, but also as about the right to not be excluded. You know, so so you can find if you if you're a, a lawyer and not, but I hang out with them. If there are those who talk about these concepts that are actually at work within law itself. So I know it's again a, a dangerous, a double-edged. Uh, so, but there is some, I think, political potential inside law that can be opened and, and, and unpacked. Um, and and we, we're seeing it in some other contexts as well. Yeah. Yeah. From the ownership, can we think about the housing system and the commons? For example, uh, David Harvey talks about property based housing system in general, the worldwide. And also, the government, all the government, governments now uh, promote to sell, sell housing. Buy housing, not yeah. rent, not yeah. Uh, yeah. yes, not not renting, yeah. buying, buying, selling. Yes. So yeah. the ownership and the property on the one side, yeah. commons uh, on the other side. How can we evaluate this uh, relation? Housing mm -hmm. system and the commons, because yeah. we are all um, uh, we are all um, trying to buy something, yeah. not share something. Yeah. Yeah. So in the global side or the uh, or political side, uh, especially in the housing system, because property is very directly related with the housing. Absolutely. So how can we evaluate this relation? Well, um, because the yeah, we were all told we had to buy buy houses, and that was going to make us secure and good citizens, and that didn't go very well. <laughs> For those who experienced foreclosure <laughs> and suddenly found that they didn't actually own, the bank owned, and you know, what is it, 5% of the American population experience, experience, has experienced foreclosure and, and has, lost their, has lost their home. So, so um, uh, the, the, the myth kind of got 
well, it didn't get busted, but it certainly got sort of shaken up a little bit. Um, well, is, I think it's an interesting question. Is, uh, is private property, sorry, is private ownership of housing, is that private property? No, I think it entails the right to exclude, but it also we can see in many ways a sort of articulation of the right to not be excluded being um, uh, practiced and performed in various ways. And the way one thinks about one's neighbors and the community, uh, the way one engages with others, there is a sort of set of kind of um, more nuanced understandings. I did some work a long time ago because um, I was interested in how people think about property and property boundaries. It's very hard to actually talk to people about property in the abstract. But it's easy to talk about things like their gardens and their, their fences and um, uh, who owns the, the fruit that is on the overhanging tree. And in law, it's, it's about sharp property distinctions. It's about the right to exclude. You know, this is yours. If it falls over the fence, it's yours. You know, if the pear falls over there, it's yours, if it's there. And then you talk to the people I spoke to anyway, um, who, owns the, who owns the pears? They would say, well, obviously, it depends. You know, do I like my neighbor? Am I having a fight with my neighbor? Who, you know, what relationship do I have? Uh, a much more kind of complicated set of understandings. So, so in other words, um, the actual kind of... Uh, practice of privating, if there is such a thing, um, I think is, 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 is complicated and nuanced. It's not just about, here's the right to exclude over here, here's the right to not be excluded over there, but I think as we you know, see in a place like the park, we can see kind of multiple forms at, at work, which is a complicated story, but I think it's important to complicate uh, that, uh, because the alternative, I think, can be problematic, ethically, as well as analytically. Yeah. I have a quite obvious question. I um, want to hear your thoughts about the role of the state in this discussion. Because you mentioned the state Italy, yeah. and then it just oh. went away. Yeah. Yeah. So even when we formulate private property as a set of relations, mm -hmm. the state is a very powerful actor in... The state makes it possible. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, you know, uh, Tim Mitchell working on the construction of private property and the state formation in the Middle East. Mm. So he said there is a historical connection between the two, the state formation and the construction of private property. Yeah. But it's not only a, you know, a historical fact, but it's obviously being reconstructed today as well through the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. the, the state yeah. interventions. Yeah. So in your story, yeah, where's the state? Where's the state? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, and if we're following Mitchell, then of course the state is only an effect. It's not. It's not an institution. And so I, you know, if you want me to go with Mitchell, then I'm really in trouble. But um, uh, so I won't. Um, uh, the, the state. Yeah, where's the state? But you uh, talked about local votes, so national. So, oh sure. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, start from there and oh, I'm not, the yeah, I can't do that. I, no, I can't do that. I mean, I, you want me to? I, and here it's obvious. I mean, the yeah, yeah. The state, the state. Well, the state obviously, um, you know, particularly in a place like Vancouver, um, constitutes a property regime, a regime of private property um, through terra nullius and, and and you know state violence and those sorts of things. So the very conditions of possibility are predicated on the state. Uh, and that notion of delegated sovereignty. So, so clearly the state is, is, is there. It, where is the state in relation to the right to not be excluded? Well, very often it's, it's there enforcing the right to exclude. Right? It's so so the, uh, you know, the wobbly can't get to the labor site because the, uh, well actually there the state wasn't even invoked, it was private security and the Pinkertons that would be brought in to beat up the, you know, bash the heads of the, of the union, the union organizers. But the state potentially is also there in supporting potentially the right to not be excluded. I mean, one can find the state articulating that, you know, um, uh, uh, in cases of private property uh, as well, places over which one would think there would be a right to exclude. You know, so uh, I don't know what the equivalent would be here, but uh, in Britain, the right to roam, right? That this principle uh, whereby privately held land 
uh, is land that over which, in certain conditions, over which the public has the right of access, the right to, to roam, the right to you know, engage in hiking and those sorts of things. Um, or uh, in relation to, uh, to, um, to labor organizing. You know, it becomes possible for a labor or for a union organizer to be at a work site and to, um, in ways that hadn't occurred in the past because of a shift in the way in which the right to exclude is being redefined such that the right to, if you like, not be excluded is being in, 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 uh, enforced. So the state is there, potentially. Well, the state is not there, uh, or not necessarily there. Um, uh, you know, Oppenheimer Park, the state is there, but commoning is being articulated against the state or without the state, as well as in relation to the system of private property. So, um, I haven't thought through, because this is a really early uh, set of ideas, but I haven't thought through more carefully the way in which the state is implicated productively or negatively in regards to the right to not be excluded, but it's clearly there. Yeah. yeah. Um, firstly, uh, thank you for coming. And thank you. And all these important things. Just, uh, I'm well aware that you, you all focus on the specific issue and the yeah. uh, role of private uh, property relations and common combination yeah. of all these um, exclusionary strategies across space. Yeah. But still, I want to ask maybe, I mean, not so much, uh, I, I don't want to so much stretch the uh, concepts, but still, um, I just wonder that, uh, okay, property relations and differences in yeah. terms of these property relations is uh, important to understand and also the key to the understanding these exclusionary strategies. Sure. But still, especially when we talk about the common issue, yeah. um, I mean, I feel like uh, there are some sort of differences uh, that there be already differences, different kind of differences in terms of different things. Okay, yeah. I mean, I you keep so much using difference, but not, I mean, we have different properties, not only in terms of this property relations, but we have different kind of organized special practices yeah. in terms of ideological differences and some other things. I mean, it's not an economically shaped or economically determined thing. No, no, no. Or also, it is not, I think, it's not determined by the law or the constitutional things no. that is given to our, no. I mean, yeah. That's why, I mean, what I'm the, for instance, I'm, I'm thinking what you were saying in relation to the, the Caribbean differential space, for instance. Uh -huh. I, and I feel like the, there, there must be some sort of differences. And what do you think about the achievement of this coming or the practice of uh, coming, let's say, yeah. uh, in terms of different roles of the differences, other differences? Of that exceed, that are, that are not just about law and the state. Yeah, I mean, yeah. sure. For instance, just, just a small example, I mean, if we just uh, think about the uh, let's say the evolution of property law, and as you said, now we have certain kind of common property relations yeah. going in the space, yeah. it goes space, yeah. and it's shaping uh, the way we are experiencing the space and at the same time sure. our relation. And what about the other differences? I mean, it, is it just, is it so important? Yes, but is it just, the, is it the only way we, we can achieve the coming or the one, 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 one hmm? Which is the only way? The, the evolution, let's say, evolution of the prior crops, and now we have the prior crops. And what is what we think? I know it's so just large and different. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> well, yeah, clearly um, it depends. It, so it's commonly more than law and, and the state. Uh, Clearly, yeah, yes it is in one sense, but it depends on what you mean by law. If you mean by law, formal legal, a sort of formal legal understandings and, and the, the, you know, the universe of the courts and the universe of, 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 of statutory instruments and those sorts of things, um, then obviously it's much more than, it's much more than that. Although, although it's interesting to see the way in which those things kind of come, get invoked and get used, right? So the, you know, the appeal to Aboriginal title by the, the people in that park, right? They're using, you know, they weren't lawyers, but they were using a set of legal arguments 
in order to make a political, to, to, to con, if you like. So, so there you can see the strategic use of law to serve political ends. But um, I, I think I think of law in a broader sense, um, in, in, uh, in terms of a kind of socio-legal understanding, where, where law is, is not just in the head of the judge, but it's, it's actually very constitutive of, of a whole set of relationships more more generally. It's, it's, it's something that is very pervasive in ways that are productive as well as problematic. Um, uh, uh, there's a famous piece uh, by um, uh, Austin Surratt that talks about law as being all over. It's just, it's, it's, it's a very ubiquitous way in which we think about who we are, think about our relationships with others and how we constitute those relationships. So, so law is actually a very pervasive uh, kind of category that um, actually is kind of quite pre present in many of those sorts of settings, even though they would not think of themselves, the people perhaps engaged in those practices, as, as, as non-lawyers, non as not engaging in law. So, um, so I, 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 I can see your point about difference and the differential space kind of understanding as something that escapes the kind of logic of, of, of law and the state, um, but I'm not sure that always happens. <laughs> Frankly, <laughs> so it should and it could, but uh, uh, not easily. I, I mean, just I'm sorry about yeah. Just I mean, what I want to uh, understand is the prime part of this is that maybe a subtype of what has to be done about the private property. Yeah, I mean, yeah. not private, private, but the reformulation of let's say let's say the yeah. reformulation of the relationships of this private property. Yeah, it's just the. The subtitle, the subtitle of the of what has to be done about this coming, right? I oh, is is it more than property? Uh, yeah. 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 So that, okay. <laughs> no, it's all about property because <laughs> all roads lead to property. No, <laughs> well, again, it depends what you mean by by property. All right. I mean, I, I common the common certainly is is in a foundational sense about property. I mean, it's it's I, I, in that property is about relations and a sort of kind of enforced relations or uh, invoked relations. Um, is it more than property? Well, yeah, of course, right? It's about you know affect. It's about it's about identity. It's about a whole bunch of other things that I'll, I'm not going to subsume simply under that category. But I'm just kind of going in, in that with that wedge because I think sometimes people who talk about the commons or commons don't talk about property. You know, they talk about institutions, or they talk about um, uh, politics, uh, or they talk about uh, you know uh, tragedies um, uh, in ways that that I think lose the prop some of the property dimensions that are broadly defined that are over there. Yeah. Thank you all for attending. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a, one quick announcement.